I'm actually going to preach a thematic message. A message that has to do with the theme of this conference. But before we get into that, sing the song, Oh Lord, I want to see your glory. I want to offer a sacrifice of praise. Oh Lord, I want to see your glory. I want to offer a sacrifice, sacrifice of praise. Revival. 
The Lord will take us back to where we first met him. Oh Lord, I want to see your glory. I want to... Israel went to fight against the Philistines. And when they went to fight against the Philistines, the Philistines defeated them and they lost about 4,000 soldiers. When they lost 4,000 soldiers, when they came back to camp, they said, why did the Lord bring such a defeat upon us today? And they took a resolution. They said, we know what we're going to do. We shall go to Shiloh and bring back the ark. Now the ark will go with us to the battle. They went and brought the ark. Now the ark might go with them to the battle. Of course, when I read the Bible, the Bible says, even when the Philistines heard that the ark was coming, they were fainting in their hearts. They were afraid. They said, of course, let me tell you what they said, what the Philistines said. Look at what they said in the Bible. Woe to us. Who will deliver us from the Lord, from the hand of this mighty God? They are the gods who struck the Egyptians with all kinds of plagues in the desert. But do you know what they told themselves? Be strong, Philistines. Be men. Or you will be subject to the Hebrews as they have been to you. Be men and fight. Ladies and gentlemen, then we are thinking of a box. God was thinking of a relationship. They brought back the ark. And the ark went with them to the battle. But to their greater chagrin, the slaughter was heavier. Israel lost 30,000 soldiers, number one. Number two, Hophina, Hophina and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, died on the battlefield. Number three, the ark of God, the dreaded ark, let me give you an example. It was this act that Uzzah touched. He wanted to help God because the ark was about falling. God asked him, did I ask you to help me? He turned the ark and he died on the spot. Here was the same ark that an unbeliever came, handled with careless abandon and devil make care attitude. They carted away the ark of the Lord. And the message came to Eli. Eli! Israel has lost 30,000 soldiers. Number two, your two sons are dead. Number three, the ark has been taken away. When he held the ark, his heart became broken. He suffered shock and he died. Then they met, one of the daughters in law was pregnant and the message came to her Israel has lost 30,000 soldiers. Number two, your husband and the brother are dead. Number three, the ark of God has been taken away. Number four, your father in law is dead. Emergency labor came upon the woman. When emergency level came upon her, she gave birth to a baby boy. And she was about dying. Somebody said to her, you've given birth to a baby boy. What shall we call a baby? She said, call the baby Ichabod. For the glory has departed from Israel. If the glory we are to be there, who born the uncircumcised Philistines to have come with careless abandon and devil may care attitude and cut away the ark of the Lord. Hear me today. 
We have wonderful churches. We have wonderful names. Glory Center. Power Arena. Dominion Cathedral. City of Joy. Victory Center. I do not know the bracketed name of your church. Hear me today. God is interested in what is on the inside than what the signboard bears. Hear me today. And that's why this is a very serious session. A very serious important. The heartbeat of God to the church. It's not about the name you have. Many will answer. I wonder if there is any name Pentecostals have not answered. Revival Center, Power Center, Fire Center, Rain Center, Holy Ghost Arena, Miracle Center. I want to ask you a question. How many miracles take place in the Miracle Center? How many victories do we experience in the Victory Center? We have Praise Cathedral. We have many beautiful names. It's not about fanciful names. It's about what happens on the inside. Hear me today. As I look at the 21st century church, I see some unfortunate situations. We mistake noise and shouting for power. Now hear me. There was a time when God was about passing. Earthquake came. The one that a typical, a typical Pentecostal will say, I have seen the Lord. But the Bible said, and the Lord was not there. Wind came, and the Lord was not there. Fire came, and the Lord was not there. But in a still, small voice, there came the presence of the Lord. As I look at the church today, we're having tongues without anointing. Tongues without anointing. No wonder empty hands are laid on empty heads. And you know what? When empty hands are laid on empty heads, they apply carbohydrate strength. I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about. Man of God, can you come? First me. Your hand is supposed to be a conductor if you are anointed. If a God is not even a one-way traffic, you can touch. You, you, you don't even need to touch somebody for somebody to fall. And of course, falling does not necessarily mean he has received something. Now, but also you can receive and fall. Now, look at what I'm saying. We are having a period when empty hands are laid on empty heads. They apply carbohydrate strength. And that's where we see the breaking of neck and, and the piercing of forehead. And brethren, before you break my neck, I fall in advance for you. Before you break my neck. I better fall in advance for you. So that I can have my neck. Are you understand what I'm saying? But I see people. We are coming the piercing of forehead. They prick it, prick it, prick it until, brother, instead of waiting until they break your neck, agree and fall. Thank you. I saw the church. We are men will come to the altar and kneel. When they come to the altar to me, what are they expecting? That anointed hands shall be laid on them. But when a dry hand is laid on you, it looks as if a nine inches block is placed on your head. As I look at the church, do you know that many places we are fast becoming entertainment centers? Sir, if you open the television, you see the Nollywood. You don't know, no, the, is it Hollywood? And in the place where they have wrestling, what do they call it? Wrestling, you know, in, in California. Is it what? Las Vegas. Uh, Las Vegas. Thank you. Where they introduce 
where they introduce wrestlers. I want to ask, what's the difference between the way they introduce wrestlers and the way we introduce preachers today? The church is fast become entertainment center. I feel high. I feel groovy. I feel yo he yo. Now listen to me. Do you know you can have sweat without feeling his glory? You can have sweat. As I look at the 21st century church, I see iniquity eating up the pulpit and the pew. I see evil politics gripping the church to the glory, to the detriment of God's glory. Now hear me, if an outsider is playing politics, that's a different thing. But if you're speaking in tongue and playing politics, I said in one of my messages injury time some years ago that the church has become more political than politicians. I want to ask a question. Why shall we use a whole tarry night to chase a demon? A demon that may have suffered from running stomach for seven days. And the church is incapable of casting out some demon. The annoying aspect, the more you cast it out, the more the demonized will begin to dance. After this conference, you will surely cast fire. Yeah. After this conference, I cancel every dryness in your life. Every dryness in your life. Everything that makes you powerless. Everything that makes you powerless. I cancel them in the name of Jesus. Shandala Braka Sekamori. That's why we have a misuse of the Holy Ghost. The intention of God is that Holy Ghost will come and empower us for service. That we shall be anointed. We shall heal the sick. We shall raise the dead. We shall perform miracles. Signs and wonders shall follow us. And there shall be manifestations of the Spirit. Because I know towards the end of the message, I'm going to let you know that when the glory comes, there will be the manifestation of the supernatural. When the glory comes, the power of God will come afresh upon us. And I tell you, I said the other day, this is your day, this is your time, the day of manifestation, the time of manifestation. But we can limit ourselves when we just begin to talk about Holy Ghost fire. And when you talk about Holy Ghost fire, you mean a missile. Missile that God has given you with which to attack your enemies. No wonder. We have a generation, a passionless generation. And it is the passionlessness of our generation that has told us to back to, back to sender prayers. Because of our passionlessness. I hear people callously, callously, hear me, callously saying, Where well, are my papa? Where well, are my mama? Die, die, die. Christianity that can kill your wicked mother is a query in Christianity. Christianity that can kill your wicked in law. Whoever may be, whether mother in law or friend, is a query in Christianity. Now hear me. God 
a, a man full of passion can still ask God, let him get an encounter that will bring about his repentance. Thank God for grace. Talking to you today, some of us, we are terribly wicked before our conversion. And I bless God that older Christian did not pray you to death before you got saved. Why must you pray other people to death? I don't want to dwell on that because it's not where I'm going. I still ask a question. Why are sinners no more afraid of Zion? Well, let me share this. And I, I want to challenge ministers and people who are here today. Do you know that in the 70s, the part of early 80s, sinners used to be afraid of stepping into Pentecostal churches? Because in their own thinking, there is a foreign medicine that Pentecostals use. When they step into the church, something will grip them. Are you understanding what I'm saying? But who bewitched us? I said, what happened to us? Why will people attend our dedication services, dance our music even more than the members of the church, even come around the altar, dance and shake themselves, and still go back without conversion? Ah. <laughs> Pastor, we are the gripping power of your sermon. Are you a messenger or entertainer? I want to ask Pastor's question. Are you a messenger or entertainer? Father, I pray this end time. Take me back to here. You first met me. I had a covenant with you. Where you put me. The changing world cannot change your message. How can I change my message? Because of the changing world. Now, I want to do it. Let, let me now show you something that happened. You know, we are... The beloved man of God, Reverend John, preached from last night. I don't want to repeat it, but Exodus chapter 33 from 18 to 23. Moses said, Lord, show me what? Your Can you lift up your hand and say, Lord, show me your glory? Lord, show me your glory. Let, me, let me hear you shout it again. Lord, I want to hear you say it again from the heart of God. Can you say it again, say it again. Say it again, say it again. Say it again, say it again, say it again. Say it again, say it again. I want to focus on Moses. The man who was still saying, show me your glory. I crave your indulgence that I invoke the credentials of Moses. Who was Moses? Number one, brought up from the royal home. Now, if you are acquainted with cred uh, about credos of civilization, you can't think of credos of civilization without remembering Egypt. Even Egypt developed a kind of writing called what? Hieroglyphics. If Egypt had a kind of writing they must have had schools if they have schools somebody must attend the best school in egypt and who else will attend the best school in egypt apart from somebody from pharaoh's house and who is the person from pharaoh's house in love with moses so moses must have gone to school if there were degrees in those days moses must have been a degree holder but he said sir lord Academics is different from your glory. 
Now hear me, I am not talking about degrees. I am not talking about your learning. I am not, I respect if you're a learned gentleman, a barrister, a doctor, a professor, but I'm going beyond what you are. I'm going beyond your academic person. Ah, the man of God said, I've gotten degrees, I've got this, but I'm going behind the degree. Lord, show me your was Moses the same who saw the burning bush and if it were today Moses will go around the preacher will go around the whole world with only the burning bush experience what was the burning bush experience a preliminary miracle mm -mm. a preliminary encounter with the Lord showed you preliminary to the main thing he wants to do with you Sir, many of us stop at the preliminary experience. We go round and round the preliminary experience. We go round and round with the little introduction that God gave to you. Papa, don't let me dwell on introduction. There are oceans to be navigated. There are mountains to be scaled. There are places to reach. Don't let me dwell on the introduction. When you call me, you gave me an introduction. When you called me, you showed me a preliminary miracle. Papa, I am tired of singing the song of the preliminary miracle. Hear me today, man of God. When the Lord called you, he gave you a preliminary miracle. He gave you a preliminary testimony. He didn't say stop there. He didn't say do I there. It was introduction. And I tell him today, Father, I am tired of dwelling on the preliminary. I am tired of dwelling on the essential things you showed me in the past. I'm pressing on that of what new eyes someday. Need every day. Take me beyond the burning bush. 
say it again, say it again. Say it again, say it again. I will tell you this year, 2012, the Lord shall take you beyond the burning bush. The Lord shall take you beyond the burning bush. I hear him say something. You've dwelt so long on the burning bush. You've sang so much on the burning bush. You preach so much on the burning bush. Mm -mm. It is too early to write your biography. Too early. Too long. Some young ministers will come up and instead of getting new experiences, what will litter the author is, I went to Calabar, I killed every cockroach. Went to Kapanchan, the mosquitoes were in trouble. Then I went to uh, Lagos, all the snakes were killed. And I went to Sokoto, I dealt with the ants. I have come to Abba to deal with the scorpion. And my worry is this. As long as they are ministering in Abba, you won't see the scorpions killed. It is only when they go to Portacot that Portacot people begin to hear how every scorpion was killed here. Come on, quit the seat of dwelling on the burning bush. That's not all the experiences that God has for you. I hear him say something. Remove your eyes from the burning bush of spirit. I want to show you new experiences. I want to take you to higher grounds. I want to show you new things. I will do greater things in your life. I will take you to higher highs. I hear him say higher highs. Higher high, higher experience, higher experience, higher experience, higher experience, higher experience, higher experience, higher experience. I tell you this year you have been anointed for higher experience. You have been anointed for something great. You have been anointed to go further. You have been anointed to go take further steps. I have a prayer for myself. If the anointing I operated on last year will be the same anointing I will use this year. Then better call me spiritual Eskimo. Mm -mm. Stunted growth. But Father, break me. I want to get loose out of spiritual Eskimo. Take me to Hanukkah. Increase me, increase my anointing, increase your glory, increase your power. I don't want to dwell on the same thing. I don't want to dwell on the same anointing. I don't want to dwell on the same testimony. Give me fresh testimony. Give me fresh testimony and take me to higher ground. Who is Moses? The son who dropped his staff. And the staff became serpent. The rim of power demonstration. Church, let me tell you something. When we talk about glory, glory is higher than power. You know what the psalmist said? I went to the sanctuary that I might see your power and your glory. Casting out demons is not what we are talking about. It's elementary demonstration. <laughs> we are talking something beyond the elementary demonstration. Mm. Let me leave Moses alone. I'm going to come back to him. When I studied the Bible, I realized that great men were never satisfied. Great men in the Bible, we are never satisfied. Anybody that gets satisfied has made a finish. Hear me as I stand the preaching to you today. I'm still scratching an introduction into God's holistic agenda for me. I am still scratching an introduction into God's holistic agenda. That's why when people praise me, I don't believe them. Any day 
you begin to believe the presence of men. You go roasted. Don't believe the presence of men. It's too early. I saw in Moses he was not satisfied. Never satisfied. There was still a hunger in him. A satisfied Christian will no longer see a revival. A satisfied person. You know, some are satisfied that they lay hands on people and they fall under power. That's elementary, elementary demonstration. Oh, is that what you are still, is that your desire? Father, when shall I pray and people begin to fall under power? That's elementary demonstration. Our problem is a Gomania. The demon of a Gomania. Self. I, I was reading this psalmist. He says, as the day pants for streams of water, so do I long for you. I don't know if you know the song that says, mm, 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 mm. You don't know the song? As the day pants for streams of war, 
God, I have come before you not looking for money, not looking for mundane things of this life, not looking for what you can love me. I have a crazy hunger. Papa, I want to have a romance with our minds. Jesus. Soon the curtain shall be drawn. Now hear me. The church is not an entertainment center. It's a fellowship of pilgrims. The church is not a social club. The church is not a community meeting. It's a fellowship of pilgrims. Men and women with the common goal. And I'm going to talk to you. If your goal is not heaven, you are in the wrong place. Look at Apostle Paul. Even before I talk about Paul, David said, it doesn't matter what they call me. King David, live forever. You know what David said? I shall be satisfied when I awake in his likeness. I'm not satisfied about the king, the men. I will only be satisfied on the resurrection morning. When I will awake in his likeness. Now look at Apostle Paul. Let me rush him. Who was Paul? The most prolific writer among the apostles. Who was Paul? In fact, I wondered his handkerchief. Did you read it? His apron. Healed the sick. Wow. In this age of anointing merchandise. Ah, Paul would have made millions out of the healing handkerchief. I tell you, anointing merchandise is trying to encroach into the church. I can make my wife emergency distributor of olive oil because we are living in a generation when olive oil has become automobondenso. I can make an emergency distributor of olive oil and I can appoint um, um, chairman. You can be the finance, uh, the accountant of that ministry. And then I frown my face and talk in tongue. 5,000 per bottle. 5,000 keyboards. You better leave it. And so you can listen to the sermon. Now, uh, 5,000. 5, 5,000 per bottle. I, I've sought the face of the Lord and I prayed over this oil. 5,000. Do you think I will get customers? 
as an itinerant preacher, um, each week, assuming I sell only 1,000 bottles, 5,000, I count that, calculate. 1,000 times 5,000, how much? Five million. I don't need your Pentecostal handshake because I'm already making five million out of the handkerchief. I mean, the. Um, and for those of you low income people, pick the white handkerchief. Immediately you reach your office, put it on your chair and sit down. Anything that they place in that place, 